Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Kitsap Unitarian Universalist Fellowship. Whoever you are and wherever you come from, for this hour, we here are one gathered congregation and all are welcome. Things look a little different this morning here in the sanctuary, and as we go along, you will see why. I invite you to follow along in the order of service. For those of you attending virtually, all the links for this service, including the order of service, are available on our website and in this morning's worship service email. If you are here in the sanctuary this morning, please silence your cell phones. In keeping with our covenant of care and concern for each other, our board of directors continues to require that we all wear masks over our mouths and noses while in the building, <clears throat> especially when we are gathered in the sanctuary for worship. Thank you for honoring that covenant and the board's directions. If you need a mask, the ushers can provide one with you. Just raise your hand. My name is Robin Singh, and I've been a member of KUF for three, about three and a half years, coming up on four years, and I am a current board member. I've served on various uh, committees, and I have led a meditation group, and sometimes get involved in the music. Our worship leaders this morning are Reverend Crystal Zerfoss, Melinda Hughes, and Brian Kenny. Reverend Crystal Zerfoss serves as our three-quarter time minister, as well as serving the inland Northwest Unitarian Universalist community in Spokane one quarter time. Melinda Hughes serves as our part-time director of religious education, and Brian serves as our music coordinator. I'd like to welcome any visitors. If you are here in person, we look forward to welcoming you outside after the service. Announcements are available on our website, www.kuuf.org, or in our weekly email newsletter, The Candle. And now, we acknowledge that the land on which we gather is the aboriginal territory of the Suquamish people. Expert fishermen, canoe builders, and basket weavers, the Suquamish live in harmony with the lands and waterways along Washington's central Salish Sea as they have for thousands of years. Here, the Suquamish live and protect the land and waters of their ancestors for future generations as promised by the Point Elliott Treaty of 1855. Now for our musical call to worship, hymn number 361, Enter, Rejoice, and Come In. Please stand as you're willing and able to sing hymn number 361, Enter, Rejoice, and Come In. The words will also appear on the screen. For our chalice lighting this morning, we invite the oldest and youngest in the room 
to come forward and light the chalice this morning to represent our first multi-generational service this year. So who do we have that is the youngest? And yeah, how about the oldest? <laughs> so are we just going with the youngest? <laughs> oh, yeah. <clears throat> Okay, so we have, we welcome Ruby and Lena to light our chalice. So if you have your own chalice or candle at home, please join us as I light, as I read our chalice lighting words. Our words are from Reverend Gretchen Haley. Whatever you have come in anticipating, whatever you expect or worry, for our world, for the future, for our lives, let it go. Thank you very much, Ruby and Lena. And our words continue. Make space in your heart to be surprised. Make room in your soul for a new story to take shape. Let astonishment be possible. At this life that remains a miracle. Imagine here the bursting of joy, relentless and resilient, coming in waves, washing over us with music, and story and silence and still this dreaming together being hope for each other and courage to believe in this new day dawning for us all please join me now in the spoken affirmation the words will appear on the screen we gather as a caring community Seeking life's deeper meanings, we value diversity and affirm the worth of all living things. We strive to speak truth in love, to act for justice, to grow in spirit, and to care for the earth. We celebrate with open hearts and minds the creative power that sustains and transforms us. And now Reverend Crystal will come forward for our joys and sorrows. Each week that we gather, we lift up the cares and concerns of our community, the joys and the sorrows we carry into this sanctuary and those we hold in our hearts. On most Sundays, our children share their joys and sorrows together up in the Matin building, while the rest of us share ours in this space together. Today, we offer our hearts to one another in multi-generational compassion and love. When shared together, our joys are amplified and our sorrows lessened. Let us be together in a time of reverence. Ashley Oliveto shares that they are thankful to have spent yesterday running their first marathon and that their aunt traveled from Boston to cheer them on throughout the race. Looking forward to being back here at KUUF next Sunday. Hilda Berlinget is celebrating her 80th birthday today. 
spending time with family, including son Stephen, who flew in from Pakistan for a surprise visit. Happy birthday. Jim and Judy Arbogast share that seeing their joy is seeing extended family for the holidays with our shared grandson. Beth Wilson shares a joy for the beautiful new gate off the back of the breezeway right out here, built by Ron Cross to match the fence there. If you haven't seen it, it's beautiful. There's also a joy that the West Sound Chorus with Brian Kenny, Mike Menifee, and Ed Luby is working on a great show for December 10th. Their website is sing.kitsap.org. Singkitsap.org. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Hope everybody can check that out. And we have a sorrow to share this week. Our dear Diane Brooks Stevens passed away on Wednesday. We are keeping her husband, Sam, and her two children and grandsons in our prayers and thoughts. May she be at peace. We light one final candle for those joys and sorrows that are still too tender to share. I invite you to breathe in with me for what is weighing on your heart this morning. Breathe out love for all that was shared with our community. Will you pray with me now? Spirit of life and love, vastness of the universe, that which some call God, by many names and no names. We lift up the cares and concerns on our hearts, sending forth our intentions of spreading our joys, growing our celebrations with one another, and holding tenderly all who are mourning, all who are suffering, all who are hurting. We set our intentions and put our energy out into the universe, knowing that we do not carry our life's burdens alone. Love, surround us, dwell deep within, and guide us always. Amen. Please remain seated and join in singing Spirit of Life, hymn number 123. The words will appear on the screen. We are entering a time of year where the earth grows colder, the animals begin to hibernate, and the days continually get shorter. This morning marks the beginning of the season of Advent. 
In the Christian tradition, Advent is the beginning of the church year. Reverend Megan Visser shares that it is a time for recognizing the transforming power of God in the world and looking forward toward the birth of Jesus and the celebration of spiritual light. Many Christians spend the season of Advent in deep reflection, readying themselves for the coming of Christ, with some even fasting from certain foods. Are any of you giving up certain foods this holiday season? Uh I bet you're adding in some extra cookies, aren't you? (laughs) I know I am. Each week until Christmas, we light a new candle on our Advent wreath along with each of the preceding candles. The purple and pink candles symbolize different spiritual aspects of getting ready, while the white candle symbolizes the birth of Jesus. The flame of each new candle reminds us that something is happening now, but something more is still to come. The light of Advent grows brighter and brighter, guiding us toward hope for what is to come, toward shared joy and personal peace. Christianity is not alone in celebrating light at this time of the year. There's Hanukkah, there's Solstice, there's Kwanzaa. All of them involve candles, fire, and lights as part of their celebrations. This morning... Robin will light our first Advent candle. We light this candle as a reminder that there is no greater power in the world than love. Through this community, we can become a blessing to one another. Our love is magnified and our lives are changed. We can hardly wait any longer for the wonder of love to be revealed. May we risk enough to become vulnerable and welcome holy tenderness. Thank you. I want to share a quick reading with you, and then we're going to move into some activities. There's a lot of speaking early on, isn't there? I think some of us who are young are a little bored already. But I want to share this reading from Jan R. Richardson, Drawing Near, A Blessing to Begin Advent. It is difficult to see it from here. I know, but trust me when I say this blessing is inscribed on the horizon, is written on that far point you can hardly see, is etched into a landscape whose contours you cannot know from here. All you know is that it calls you, draws you, pulls you toward what you have perceived only in pieces, in fragments that came to you in dreaming or in prayer. I cannot account for how, as you draw near, the blessing embedded in the horizon begins to blossom upon the soles of your feet, shimmers in your two hands. It is one of the mysteries of the road, how the blessing you have traveled toward, waited for, ached for, suddenly appears as if it had been with you all this time, as if it simply needed to know how far you were willing to travel to find the lines that were traced upon you before the day that you were born. Good morning, everyone. It's so exciting to see you all here and to see us all together, because usually some of us are up in the building up above. Um, So it's so nice to be together this morning. So what we're going to do this morning and for the next three weeks, so four weeks, because there's four weeks in Advent, is we're going to be creating a paper chain that is going to decorate our tree. So each week you're going to be able to add to this paper chain. And today we're going to start with love links. So, uh, Reverend Crystal is going to be sharing a story of love, and 
While she is doing that, you are invited to write on one of the links that we will then be creating, putting into a chain later on in the service. So there are two pens on each table. That's what we have. Uh, share, we share in community. Um, there are different color papers for you to add. There's some red and green for Christmas colors. There's some purple for Advent. Choose whichever color you'd like. And while she is sharing the story, if you can think about a message of love, something you love, something you'd like to share about love, uh, go ahead and write it on your love link. We're going to ask you to share your love links later in the service if you want to. So think, think of something that you want to share and have on our tree all season. While you're doing that and you're passing the, the pens around the table, let's hear a story from Denise Tracy about Ralph Waldo Emerson and his daughter, Ellen Tucker Emerson. What do you want for Christmas? The father asked his daughter. Do you want a doll? She wrinkled her nose and scrunched her eyes and thought, no. A tea set? A pony? No, father, I have a year to think. I want this year to be a special year to remember. All right, you think and let me know. Ellen thought. What do you think she might want for Christmas? Go ahead. Do you think she might want a Christmas tree for Christmas? What else? What do you think she might want from her father for Christmas? Yeah, Henry. It might be what? Her family. Oh, that's a great answer. Yes. An ornament. That's a great answer. Anyone else? That table was on top of it. Anyone else? Any of these other tables? <laughs> Any thoughts for, for a young girl for a Christmas present? A phone? Oh, a pony. Oh, we sure already said no to the pony. <laughs> I was thinking an iPhone. Yes, she might want an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> she thought of bonbons, chocolate, new dresses, hats, kids' boots, books, gloves, lace collars, but none of those were what she wanted. What would be special? A puppy. A puppy. Yeah, a puppy would be special. Each day her father asked, Ellen, do you know what you want for Christmas yet? And Ellen would shake her head, no, no, father, I'm still thinking. After four days, her father said, Ellen? Yes, father, I've decided. Well, I have a riddle. It will tell you what gift I want for Christmas. The riddle is this. You cannot buy it, for it is worth all the money you have, but only you can give it. Can you repeat that with me? You cannot buy it, for it is worth all the money you have, but only you can give it. I need to repeat this riddle because it will tell me what gift you want for Christmas. I cannot buy it because it's worth all the money I have, but only I can give it. Is that right? Yes, Father. Well, now it is my turn to think about your riddle. I have to find the perfect present in the mystery. Her father paced and pondered. He repeated the riddle over and over. Let's say it together. You cannot buy it, for it is worth all the money you have, but only you can give it. I cannot buy it, but only I can give it. He paced and pondered. Finally, he smiled. I know what it is! I know what it is! Now, he had to think about how to give it. What do you think he's going to give her? A house? A hug? Love? His heart. Oh, I see a heartbeat over there. A puppy! A puppy. <laughs> We're still back to the puppy! 
<laughs> you might have to pay some money for the puppy. <laughs> Under, what's that? Time. Ooh. Under the Christmas tree, there was no present from her father. She didn't expect one. After all the presents were opened, Ellen's father said, it is now time for Ellen's present from me. Ellen, come and sit with me. So Ellen climbed into the armchair and sat on her father's lap. My present to you is very special. I hope it is what you wanted, for it is not a book or a toy or clothes, but instead it is a present that is for all seasons and for each day. This year, your Christmas present from me is that we will spend time together every week, just the two of us. For you are my very special daughter, and I love you dearly. Ellen hugged him. Oh, Daddy, I knew you would figure out the riddle. Her father said, and you can say it with me, you cannot buy it, for it is worth all the money you have but only you can give it. It took me a long time to figure out the answer, but when I did, I knew the gift you wanted. The answer was simple, give yourself. Oh, Father, I wanted a gift to make this year special. Time together with you will make this year the very best year of my life. Ellen looked at her father's eyes why, Father, you're crying. Yes, you teach me more than any book I've ever written or read. By giving you time, I will gain more than I give. It was Ellen's turn to figure out this riddle. How could her father, by spending time with her, get more than he gave? She thought she knew, love multiplies. Love does multiply, especially when we give it away. What a great reminder on this first Sunday of Advent when our theme is love. That the more we share love, the more love grows and grows. I can't wait to hear about the love that you share and what it means. And now, we're going to sing our first Christmas song of the season. Woohoo! Do you know that the guy who wrote Jingle Bells actually lived down south in Georgia when he was writing about the sleigh races in the Massachusetts snow? James Lord Pierpont, whose father was a Unitarian minister and his brother was a Unitarian minister, actually wrote The One Horse Open Sleigh as a Thanksgiving song in 1857. That was a long time ago. The first performance of the song is thought to have been performed by a minstrel troupe. That's pretty problematic. It reminds us that we need to keep doing our anti-racism work. And in 1965, more than 100 years after it was written, Jingle Bells, as we know it today, was the first song broadcast from space. I bet we'll sound even better when we sing it. Please rise in body and or in spirit and join in singing Jingle Bells.
We gather as a religious community to give each one of us a place where we can do the work of many. <clears throat> Together, our light is much brighter than a solitary flame. Now is the time in our service when we share the sacred act of giving, an expression of gratitude transformed into generosity that breathes life into our mission. As part of our mission that inspires us to act on our beliefs, we share our weekly offering with a local nonprofit agency providing services within our larger community. Our charitable giving recipient for the month of November is Q Youth Resources. In a moment, our ushers will move among us with baskets to collect the offering. Donations placed in the basket will go to Q Youth Resources. If you would like your offering to be used for KUUF, please use one of the envelopes provided in the baskets. For those of you joining us online, you may go to our website, KUUF.org, and select the Giving tab for PayPal and mailing information. If this is your first time at KUUF, feel free to let the basket pass you by. Your presence is your gift. Let there be an offering to strengthen and sustain our community, which is sacred to so many of us. Let us enjoy a gift of music from Brian Kenny as he plays Rain, Rain, Go Away by Vince Giraldi. Lovely. 
Well, good morning again this morning, I guess. Okay, it's a long day already. Um, so I, when we were thinking about the multi-generational service, I started thinking about the Christmas tree. So one of the traditions that has been around at the fellowship as long as I can remember is that we have had a Christmas tree here in the sanctuary. And it isn't just a tradition here. How many of you either put up a Christmas tree or know somebody who puts up a Christmas tree? A lot of people. Uh, Some people have small trees. Some people have very large trees. Some people have artificial trees. Some people cut down their trees. And some of you might even remember Elizabeth Bondi, one of our ancestors, each year she and her husband dug up a tree and brought it in for our Advent tree. Some people have live trees. There haven't always been Christmas trees. You heard Reverend Crystal talk earlier about a lot of the winter holidays that celebrate lights. And so thinking back lots and lots of years ago, before there was electricity, And in the winter, it was very dark. And people didn't know as much about science as we do now. They didn't know about the sun and the planets and how everything orbited and revolved. So they would tell a story. These ancient people would celebrate solstice as the longest night of the year. And they knew that soon the nights would get shorter and the days would get longer and light would return. People weren't sure why that happened, so they would tell a story about how the sun god was weakening, and then after solstice, he was regaining his strength. So people would bring in evergreen boughs, green plants that would stay green forever, evergreen, to have that light and color in their house. I didn't know this until I started doing some research. I always think of solstice as being in the northern hemisphere, Druids and up in the European countries, but it was also celebrated in Egypt. In Egypt, they celebrated solstice by filling their home with green palm rushes in honor of the sun god Ra. Celts would decorate their homes. Vikings believed that evergreens were the plants of Baldur, the god of light and peace. Ancient Romans had a feast in honor of Saturn, that sounds familiar, the god of agriculture, and decorated their homes and temples with evergreen boughs. Saturnalia was the most important celebration in Rome, and it was held between December 17th and 25th. During Saturnalia, many Romans practiced, shall we say, merrymaking, and exchanged (laughs) presents. Does that sound familiar, exchanging presents? But still, there weren't any Christmas trees. Christmas trees, as we have them today, began in Germany in the 16th century. Christians brought decorated trees into their homes, and they would decorate them with gingerbread and nuts and apples. However, Christmas trees weren't yet a tradition outside of Germany. Did you know that it is one of our Unitarian ancestors who's known as the father of the American Christmas tree? His name was Charles Follen. He was born in Germany, and as a young adult, he, because of his political beliefs, he moved to the United States. He believed in individual rights and freedom, and he was a fervent opponent of slavery. He lived in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and studied to become a Unitarian minister. He eventually became a minister in Lexington, Massachusetts, and in 1832, he and his wife, Eliza, had a Christmas party, and at that Christmas party, there was a Christmas tree. There had been Christmas trees here and there in the United States, especially in German communities. However, the Christmas tree was, this particular Christmas tree, the Follens Christmas tree, was written about in a very popular magazine of the time. And because so many people read about it, many more people started putting up Christmas trees. Because of its popularity, the Fulton's tree is known by historians as one of the first Christmas trees in the United States. So like the ancient peoples of the Northern Hemisphere, 
We bring greenery into our sanctuary, and like members of the Fullen Church Society in Lexington, Massachusetts, we will continue our tradition of our Christmas tree by decorating it. So this comes, all the young people are really excited, to the active part of our, part of our service. So the ushers are going to be helping us out by bringing around some baskets that have ornament making materials. So for those of you who like to follow directions, um, there are some ornaments that you could choose to make. There's directions, instructions. Each basket has some ribbon. If you would like to make ribbons to decorate our tree, there's different ribbons. Um, and you can use the pipe cleaners, tinsely things to, we'll, we'll attach them later. Um, you could make this paper decoration and there are already some pre-stapled strips to make these decorations out of. A little hint that we learned yesterday when we were making all our samples, you'll want to hold it for a few seconds so the glue sticks. Um, but some of the decorations, we were trying to come up with things that weren't kind of messy. So we have a lot of little pipe cleaner decorations. So where there's a little angel, there's a little wreath, um, there's a, I think it's like a susicle Christmas tree. Um, or you can just be creative with the materials that are in there. So we are going to have a time now of community and fellowship and make some ornaments and enjoy some Christmas music.
This room is festive. I wonder if y'all want to sing another Christmas carol while we're finishing up our ornaments. Let's sing Deck the Hall as we get ready to decorate our tree. Will you join in singing Deck the Hall with me? Yeah. Woohoo! All right. Yes, deck the hall. We are now going to deck our hall, more specifically our Christmas tree, with the beautiful ornaments and love links that we have created this morning. I see some of you are still working on your ornaments. That is okay. First, we want to say a, a word of thanks to Paul and Beth for bringing in and delivering our Christmas tree. I want to share that, that they get the tree each year from... Edda's project, Holiday Tree Lot, this is a, this is a Edda's project, um, actually donates money, gives money, it's a project that's raising money for clean water in Bolivia. So it's a great way for us to be supporting this project. We also want to say thanks to the folks who came in yesterday to help set up the sanctuary and get our tree set up and our tables and everything. We want to thank Lane and Jenny and Vernada and Helen for helping set up the room. Thank you. It takes a community, doesn't it? In a moment, you will be invited to come up to place your ornaments on our shared tree and to offer a brief message of love into the microphone if you so choose. You can, you can share what you wrote on your love link. Melinda will receive your love link and attach it to the next, next one to create a chain to put on our tree. We'll have you come up by table, starting over here on this side by the tech table. The ushers will let you know when it's your time to come forward. Remember to bring both your love link, that slip of paper, and the ornaments with you so we can put them on the tree. Let us share in this festive tradition of decorating our tree. Make sure you make sure you bring your your little slips of paper too. Woohoo! Would you like to share your love link? I love the forest at our house. I love my children. Thank you. I put um, cards on every table, most tables, um, about where we got the tree, and you can get yours there too. I wrote that love is forever. Love is forever. <laughs> I love decorating for Christmas in my home. Excellent. If you haven't found the string in your baskets, there's string in there to help tie up your ornaments to hang on the tree. I wrote love to Ziggy. Ziggy is my grandson who'll be born in March. And um, Ziggy's 
probably not the final name, but it's what we call him now. Chocolate and music. <laughs> yes. You want to send up a table? Are we having fun? Yes. Look at our tree getting adorned. Here come some more folks to decorate our tree. Excellent. What's the, oh no, we're, we're getting, we're coming up. Do you want to share on the microphone? Okay. That's okay, you can just give it to her. And you can hang your ornament on the tree. Do you, Trisha, do you all want to come up? If you're ready. You want to share? Yes. I am blessed to love and be loved by my sweet, demanding dog, River. <laughs> There's a dog theme this morning, it sounds like. Listening is loving. Thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Do you want to share? Hold it real close. Love without justice is not love, rather, it's oppression. All good. Love is kind. Excellent. Love is like a magic penny. The more you give, the more you have. Oh, I like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, really? Love is never an ending like happily ever after, but continuing each day and worth striving for. Amen. I love my mom. Oh, nice. Diane Brooks Stevens is and will always be loved. Love is kind. Yes. You want to share? Okay. You can give your ring to Melinda. Do you want to share, Henry? Do you want to say it out loud? This? Yeah. Oh. Uh, sure. I love everything. All right. Grandparent love is a special love. Yes. Yes. Look at our tree getting fuller and fuller. Oh, my goodness. I hope those of you who are watching from home can see all this beautiful decoration here. All you need is love. Amen. Love the natural beauty of the great outdoors. The natural beauty of the great outdoors. Yes. I love Ed, I love my dad who's 93, my son who's 23, <laughs> my friends and family.
We give those to Melinda. She's stapling them all together. Oh, nice candy tray. Love is wanting what you have. Is there anyone who hasn't come up to put their ornaments on the tree yet? Oh, there we go. We got a couple more. Uh, Mother Earth, thank you for surrounding us in love. May we share and return it. Amen. Loving kindness. Any last minute ornaments? All right. Okay. The strips go to Melinda and then you just hang that. Love never fails. Peace and love for Sam Stevens and country ham biscuits. Love something or someone every day. Yes. That is a great message. Thank you all. <laughs> Her taller people. It's only a link when it's connected to others. The link that is connected to others. Our love links. I like seeing that there are a couple folks who came up a couple different times to add some more ornaments. And Melinda has our love link chain. What a genuine expression of love.
What a fine looking tree. Let's give a round of applause to us. Now let's join, let, how about we stand as you're willing and able and let's join in singing Oh Christmas Tree as we look at our beautiful Christmas tree. I want to invite all of you to join us after the service outside for our refreshment, our social hour. It's a time for coffee and talking and getting a chance to catch up or maybe meeting someone new. If you want to stay inside where it's a little bit warmer, although the sun is shining, so I think it's pretty nice out, but if you stay inside, please keep your mask on. And if you are able and you want to, after you've had your coffee and you've chatted a little while, come on back in the sanctuary and help us pick up the tables and move the chairs back into position. We could use a couple of volunteers to help uh, put the sanctuary back. So now we are going to release our flame and I'll invite Judy to come forward. We release our flame with these words from Reverend Kristen Grassel Schmidt. In this season of waiting, the days, the time when the days grow shorter and the nights longer, as we keep watch for hope and peace, joy and love to be born in our midst, may the wings of the Spirit open softly within us, gracing us with inspiration so that our waiting itself becomes the place of a new creation. Amen. You can extinguish the Advent candle too. Thank you. My friends, go now in peace. In the spirit of Advent, make love manifest in all you do. Amen and blessed be.